It's a great honor for me to have worked with Frankie Felder, Dr. Frankie Felder, my friend, who, as uh, you will notice, the book cover itself, which I like very much, Breaking Chains. And uh, she broke a chain at Clipson University, where I now teach, by becoming the first African-American dean uh, at Clemson University. Uh, I was so impressed when she decided to do her family history. I've been advocating this for years. It's an amazing story. There's always been African-American history and African-Americans knew their history through the oral tradition. But it's so important that we document these stories the way that Frankie has done. It was not until Roots that I think most people understood that you could trace and find family histories. My book in my father's house are many mansions, family and community in Edgefield when it came out uh, was one of the first books that actually used African-American genealogy to make important arguments in what we think of as historiography. And this book is in that very tradition. It's one that uh, I'm proud to have written a forward for. I'm very, very proud of what Frankie has done and honored with that I'm a part of it. I just think she's done a tremendous job of tracing out these stories. And it's an inspirational book. I mean, we think of the horrors of racism, and of the enslavement, all of these horrible things. I mean, you know, people forget, we just had an anniversary of 9-11. They believe that terrorism started on 9-11, 2001, but African-Americans lived in a terroristic society, literally, at least until 1965 in the Voting Rights Act. But one of the things that Frankie has been able to do Dr. Felter has documented the human spirit and the triumph of the human spirit, the creativity and the ability to make a way out of no way. So I'm very proud of what she's done. And I'm happy to recommend this book. And, you know, I don't need to talk about it very much because I've talked about it in the introduction of forward to the book. So you can see what I think of it. Congratulations, Frankie. You have done us all a real favor, in particular to the history profession, of documenting your family history. And I would say one other thing, it's not just family history. I think one of the things that Frankie does as a person and that she's done in this book is create community and study community, which are related, I think. And I appreciate so much what you do to create community and to write about. story, Unchained and Liberated from His Story, is the result of 18 years of research into who my ancestors were, men, women, and children enslaved in rural towns of deep southern states, as were 4.1 million others. Our story uncovers intentionally hidden, painful stories that built resilience, courage, compassion, and an abiding faith in God, in these ancestors who once traveled the stony roads of South Carolina, Mississippi, Louisiana, and Texas in the 18 and 19. This book broadens the landscape of the Southern communities in which the first Felder families made their homes. It brings the slaves' lives and perspectives into view, looks at multiple sides of the Civil War as it ravaged communities and divided families, allows freedmen's voices to be heard, providing background and context for the failure of Reconstruction 
and the emergence of Jim Crowism in these places. Many ironies are evident. Why did I never know anyone named Felder except my immediate family and sisters and my father's mother until I hired a young lady to work on my staff when I directed the Upper Bound program at Kansas State University? Vicki Felder was African American and from South Carolina. How did I end up working for 30 years at Clemson University, an institution that I had never heard of until 1987 when I was hired as the first African American dean in its 98 year history? An institution that sits on the Fort Hill plantation of John C. Calhoun, the law school roommate of John Myers Felder, the largest Felder slaveholder in the state of South Carolina. I now sit comfortably surrounded on Sunday mornings by beautiful stained glass windows of AME and Baptist churches, revealing subtle glimpses into the Christian cultures of my ancestors' past. If I peer through these windows from the inside out, which I have done the entirety of my life, I get one perspective. But if I peer through these windows from the outside in, which this research has allowed me to do, I get another perspective. Happily growing up in segregated Petersburg, Virginia, and studying and working in Richmond, both significant contributors to the Southern narratives about slavery, the Civil War, and Reconstruction, I was surrounded daily by symbols that told me as a black American, I did not amount to much, and neither did my parents, or their parents, or their parents, that our history didn't matter. The fourth grade history textbook adopted for all public Virginia schools in 1957 when I was in elementary school perpetuated that narrative. And without much successful challenge to the textbooks, generation after generation of young Virginians were taught his stories that prevented honest conversations, assessments, and change to the difficult divisions created in the South because of white supremacist attitudes, beliefs, and pedagogical practices. His stories tell of the Revolutionary War hero in Orangeburg, South Carolina, Captain Henry Felder, who was friends with the Indians, who saved a northern-born free black man from being enslaved by slave trader kidnappers and hired him as his foreman, perhaps. But his stories about Captain Felder do not tell that he purchased slaves, that he voted against the article in the proposed Continental Association to discontinue the slave trade industry, and that in 1860, his descendants enslaved more than 1,312 people on their plantations and farms. There's a saying that when the ancestors want to be found, they show up. And many of ours did in places I could have never imagined in a parking lot at a theology school no longer used to train ministers, in a book left out on a table in the Port Gibson Library, in a play written about Magnolia, Mississippi, in a WPA slave narrative, in an envelope, in a storage closet, in the courthouse in Greensburg, Louisiana. 
in the African American Civil War Museum in Washington, D.C., and in the Confederate soldiers' files of the National Archives, just to name a few. Our story is one of slavery and bravery. Our Hulbert ancestors were slaveholders. 108 men, women, and children were enslaved on their expansive plantations of more than 1,700 acres in Claiborne County, Mississippi. Our Felder ancestors were enslaved, but one, Sergeant Isaac Felder, bravely walked off the plantation and served in the United States Colored Troops at Port Hudson, Louisiana, where the bravery and the fighting of the black soldiers became the turning point that sealed the outcome of the Civil War. Our story is one of property rights and civil rights as soon as the emancipation provided some rights to those human beings who were once classified as property, our Felder ancestors purchased property themselves, homes for their families. Our Felder ancestors exercised their civil rights to marry, to vote, to build and attend schools, and to establish churches of their own after withdrawing from the Felder churches in Mississippi, where they worshiped as slaves with the plantation masters. Our story is a story of biblical misappropriation and prayerful supplication. Reverend Charles Felder, preaching to slaves at Felder's campground and other Mississippi and Louisiana churches to obey their masters whether they are perverse and wicked is juxtaposed against Reverend Sona Paul Felder, our great-grandfather, preaching to and praying with his congregation in the AME churches for God's continued blessings of freedom. Our story is a story of patterns of destruction and patterns of instruction, Jim Crowism and activism. It is a story that angers me, yet it is one that empowers me. But it's broader than just the Felder and Hulbert families. It's about the Southern experience and thus generalizable across many families. It likely touches your family's history also. Our ancestors, yours and mine, interacted together or not to create the history of the past. And we, you and I, will interact together or not to create the history of the future. Because our story was pruned from the branches of the Felder and Hulbert family trees, I invite anyone knowledgeable to add to the story to help clarify, correct, and more comprehensively write what clearly is an intermingled, although calculatedly concealed history of Felders and Hulberts in the South. An African proverb says that until the lion learns to write, the story of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. I hope that our story, unchained and liberated from his story, will encourage you to hunt for your story, to document your findings, and to contribute to the accurate telling of history of all of us, we the people. Whatever it is that I am is not of me alone. It's that long journey from some unknown, blood-soaked motherland and the survival lessons the ancestors' lives have shown that bring me to opportunities bought 
with shattered hands. I'll not hang my head in feigned shame. The shame cannot be mine, whether man, woman, or child. They withstood each captor's bout, though skin whipped raw and bleeding, then brutally soaked in brine. Their resolve never faltered. Those attacks they meant to flout. They laid down a firm foundation to prosper and to grow, to use our God-given talents to learn and build and till, to add now to this our nation. This is the least I owe with humble appreciation their steps I'll vow to fill. This truth for sure, I won't deny when all is said and done. Today, I am that vision the ancestral slaves did spur. May their pride, their toils, and their ransom be ignored by none. I owe a debt I'll always pay. I am because they were.